Okay, I'm using the Skull Watcher ED80 Pro Series Gold version and I'm observing the M42 Orion Nebula uh, with the Max Vision 28mm eyepiece. This eyepiece I don't expect to show me the trapezium in the uh, in the Orion Nebula, but it actually shows it M42 trapezium. You can see it split in four or at least three of them you can see easily this is a very low magnification and uh, also this telescope has a very lower uh, f number than for example this sct and yet you can see with this a lot of details actually in the orion nebula and surrounding the star clusters and yet i can see a lot The clean and neat images this ED refractors, refractors provide are the, very close to the images you can see with the Fraunhofer telescope. Means they're very high F number near between anything between F11 to F15. Almost chromatic aberration free. It's amazing image quality. So ED refractors of a Skywatch are really secret. Uh, well kept secret. They don't have, of course, tell that what kind of glass they're using. They say shot glass, but the actual formula of it is not known. And they really punch above their weight. They're equal to many of the premium brand telescopes at a very affordable price. And the Max Vision 68 degrees 28 millimeter is one of the best eyepieces. I believe this can be better than the Panoptic. I have tested them. 40 millimeter of this, excellent. In my opinion, is better than the Panoptic 41 millimeter of the Teleview, and also 35 millimeter of this 68 degrees is better than Panoptic uh, 35 millimeter. So 34 millimeter of, of max vision. Okay, I'm using now the APM HDC 20 millimeter 100 degree eyepiece. The sharpness of the view is amazing. Of course, when you compare it to the max vision 28 millimeter, you have a higher magnification, and that is reflected in the visibility of the trapezium. Four stars, easy. Uh, they are tight grouping in this view yet, but you see a lot more darker background the sky. Also at the same time, uh, the nebulosity has also increased, and you can see the pattern of the nebula, the way that it looks like uh, photographs, almost as if some very uh, slight tinge of the. Uh, red or pink, I should say, uh, visible, and that's really amazing. That's really good. I didn't expect it to see this. I can see it now. Really good. I'm now observing with the uh, APM 20 millimeter and the Skywatcher EDAT Pro series. The cluster. Um, M35 beside it and an NGC cluster also yeah, both in Gemini and that cluster is NGC 2158 it almost looks like a um, should I say globular cluster fuzzy at this aperture it looks fuzzy and of course it maybe is a open cluster but it's so compact or so far away that uh, we see it as a, a beautiful faint fuzzy beside the glitter of the diamonds of the M35. Beautiful sight. And with this telescope and eyepiece, I can see these strings of stars in the M35, very faint stars and uh, it's so delicate and beautiful 
I've never seen anything like that. The sky background, the contrast, the darkness of the sky background is so beautiful. It helps to see a lot more than what you think uh, you may see or what the photographs show you. Oh, suddenly it became so dark uh, or my eye adapted to the darkness. I can see some stars in the NGC 2158. Uh, it's often cluster, I think. But I see a lot more. I see nebulosity even around the stars on the M35. It's beautiful. Strings of stars like pearls. This is like the classical descriptions of a Flammarion and all those uh, ancient astronomers describing it. It's so beautiful. And this sculpture, ED80, is such a good telescope. I can see iris disk around the star. The stars are pinpoint, tiny, tiny pinpoint diamonds. And uh, yeah, according to brightness, this, the brightness varies. And uh, I can see iris disk around them. <laughs> it is very rare to see iris disks diffraction pattern around the stars. This is a brilliant telescope. Of course, uh, partly can attribute the exceptional view uh, to the telescope and eyepiece and also to his astrophysics max bright uh, star diagonal. It's exceptionally bright and very good quality uh, star diagonal. The mirror quality and the build quality is amazing. Oh, suddenly it became so dark, uh, or my eye adapted to the darkness. I can see some stars in the NGC 2158. Uh, it's often cluster, I think. But I see a lot more. I see nebulosity even around the stars on the M35. It's beautiful. Strings of stars like pearls. This is like the classical descriptions of a Flammarion and all those... Uh, ancient astronomers describing it. It's so beautiful. Of course, uh, partly can attribute the exceptional view uh, to the telescope and eyepiece and also to his astrophysics max bright uh, star diagonal. It's exceptionally bright and very good quality uh, star diagonal. The mirror quality and the build quality is amazing. I was using the APM 20mm to find the uh, M51 in the Canis Venetity. Uh, I started from Al Qaeda, as you know, and you have to, that's the end of the Big Dipper's handle. And then you go toward the south and you find it slightly, probably a few degrees. And I couldn't find it, I couldn't believe that I cannot find it. Then I noticed that there is a bright patch there all the way. I thought that is cloud because there were clouds coming and going. Then it became clear completely and the, the star was yet, this uh, nebula was there yet. was so bright. And I thought, realized that that's M51. It had two centers and I could see the rings of it. I mean, there's a spiral arms. And all this with the AEDAT, Scarborough EDAT, which is 80 millimeter, 3 inch. Uh, telescope refractor and then I put this uh, Nirvana of 7 millimeter this car watcher Nirvana uh, 82 degrees and I could see it clearly clearly but this with this one is so bright because it's a uh, field of view was wider the magnification lower you could see it against the background of the sky with this one is a little bit more visible but uh, less bright. This one was very bright. Um, I easily mistook it for a cloud. So this is the setting I used, the telescope and three eyepieces. And uh, I just want to talk about this galaxy. Now, although the street light was very bright, I could see it easy if I head away from the 
and my back was what they liked. So that is the uh, NGC5194, also known as the Whirlpool Galaxy or M51. And I could see the spiral pattern and the companion barely. And the spiral pattern was big. And it was so bright in this telescope, I couldn't first believe that I, I found it. I was looking elsewhere. But it was there. And I found it. These charts are amazing. You already are savoring me. And uh, especially this one. Low power. Uh, not much useful, but in high power, that really shows its usefulness. It pays for itself. So, this is the setup I used, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a really uh, joyful session and I really enjoyed using this telescope. I think this uh, Skywatcher ED-AT punches well above its weight. I uh, came in because it was cold, otherwise I just could stay and do a lot more. I could see easily the galaxies. Um, and including the M51. I tried the low triplet. I think I saw it, but uh, it was getting really cold, so I just came in. Uh, I didn't spend much time to really uh, prove that what I've seen. But anyway, that's what I was able to do in the time that I had.